Good morning, everyone. You're all very welcome to this service of, of Holy Communion. And, and just in preparation, you should all have the wee cups. Um, if you don't, please raise your hand and one of the wardens will, will bring a, a cup up to you. And, and just in preparation, if you all want to peel off the very top layer, which will reveal the bread, and then when Andrew takes over, he will guide you when to, to open up the, the wine part. Uh, and just some announcements there will be a Bible study on the book of James, and that's on Wednesday evening at 8.15, Wednesday the 27th of October at 8.15 in the church. Um, and also there's a, a meeting of Ignite, the youth meeting, on Saturday the 30th at half seven, and they meet fortnightly. And don't forget that the clocks go back next weekend, isn't that correct? Yeah. <clears throat> so um, I always remember the clocks spring forward and fall back. So this is autumn, so they fall fall back next weekend. And next weekend, there will, next Sunday, there will be the family service, and the theme will be the main thing, the main thing. So you're all very welcome to come along to that as well. Uh, GFS and CLB will meet on Monday the first at 6:45 to 7:45. Um, and also the food bank stuff. Now, there's a particular one that they're looking for is heavy-duty bags. <clears throat> now, that's not bin liners. That's like the carrier bags that you would use for Asda or Tesco, sort of the lifelong. So if you have any of those spare, please do leave those into the church or into the rectory. And that's it. Uh, so could I ask you all to please stand? So do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe and trust in God the Father who made the world. Do you believe and trust in God the Son? I believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed mankind. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit? I believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're going to worship God by singing, Come Lord and meet us.
us pray. So we say together the words of the Collect for Purity. Almighty God, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy on us, and write these your laws in our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So let us affirm our trust in God's mercy and confess that we need forgiveness. Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Holy Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And the collect for the fifth Sunday before Advent. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us to hear them, to read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Could I ask you all to please stand for the reading of the Gospel. <coughs> so hear the Gospel of our Saviour Christ according to St. John's Gospel, chapter 5, beginning at verse 36. Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. For the works that the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I am doing, testify that the Father has sent me, and the Father who sent me has himself testified concerning me. You have never heard his voice, nor seen his form, nor does his word dwell in you, for you do not believe the one he sent. You study the scriptures diligently, because you have that in them, you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from human beings, but I know you. I know that you have not, that you do not have the love of God in your hearts. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. But if someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe since you accept glory from one another, but do not seek the glory that comes from the only God? Do not think I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom your hopes are set. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But since you do not believe what he wrote, how are you going to believe what I say? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And we remain standing as we worship, singing, My hope is built on nothing less.
Let's pray. Father, we want to pray that you would speak to us through your word and by your spirit. I pray you'd take my lips and use them, that you'd speak through them for your name's sake and for your glory. Amen. Well, in the passage that was read to us, it's important that we understand what led to this instant, what led to Jesus talking about himself and about the Scriptures. Well, if you read the beginning of John chapter 5, Jesus heals a guy who has been lame for 38 years, and he heals him on the Sabbath. And, and that's the issue that is here, that he heals this guy on the Sabbath. And so, for the, for the Jews, they believed that you couldn't do any work on the Sabbath. Even carrying something on the Sabbath was against their law. But they conceded that on the Sabbath that God worked, that even on the Sabbath, God did two things. God judged on the Sabbath, and he also was someone who brought life on the Sabbath. And so it's interesting, if you look at what Jesus says before this particular passage, in verse 17, he begins to talk about himself and about the work. He uses twice in one verse about work. He wants them to be very clear that the work that the Father has given him to do is the very thing that he's been doing. That just as the Father is the one who on the Sabbath can bring judgment as well as bringing life, so the Son also is involved in both of those things, that there's judgment, but there's also life, life for those who will come to Him, life for those who, unlike these teachers of the law, they refuse to come to Him. So on the Sabbath, Jesus heals this guy. He brings life to him. And if you read what he says after he finds him later, he, he then s says to him, stop sinning or something worse might happen to you. He wants him to be very, very clear that it, he's about bringing life on the Sabbath. But if this guy continues on the way that he, he wants to, to live his life, if he's living his life outside of the way that God wants, then there will be consequences for that. Something worse is that he will, be, he will not be in God's presence forever. He will be excluded from the presence of God for eternity. That's the greatest thing that we, we see that for those who don't accept Jesus, then they don't spend eternity with him. Instead of eternal life, then there's eternal damnation. But Jesus is about bringing life. He wants people to have life. We see that, don't we, in what God says uh, through um, the word of, that Paul says to Timothy, that God doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants everyone to be saved. But this was happening on the Sabbath, and so because of that, the Jews, they couldn't accept who Jesus was. And so Jesus then began to speak about himself and what is, is backing up what he's doing. And he talks about the Scriptures. And he says to them, you diligently study the Scriptures because you think that by them you possess eternal life. These are the Scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. And then he goes on later at the, at the end of uh, the part that was read to us, he talks about that Moses spoke about him. And so, in the Scriptures, we have testimony about who Jesus is. Jesus, we see, if you look at John's Gospel, and if you, uh, I was showing people at the Bible study that if you have a, a Bible app, and you go to the search function on the Bible app, and you simply put in the word Scripture, uh, for this particular passage, if you put in Scripture once you're in John's Gospel and then press search, you'll find that 13 times in John's Gospel, the word Scripture or Scriptures is there. 
John, more than any gospel writer, is wanting us to see that Jesus is the one who was spoken about. He wants people to, to understand that the Scriptures don't bring life in themselves. The Scriptures are meant to lead us to Jesus. And they lead us to God. So that that's the, the purpose of Scripture, is to lead us to the one. And so Jesus talks about the source. And the source, when it comes to, to life, Jesus is the source of life. That's what he says to them. But you refuse to come to me to have life. If you look at, through John's gospel, how many times does it talk about Jesus and he's connected with life? Right from the beginning of John's gospel, John wants us to understand about who Jesus is that he's the one through whom all things were made, that he's the light and he's the life. He's the one who made us, and therefore he's the one who can, through the miracles, the signs that John talks about, he's the one who can fix us where we're wrong. He can make us a new, a new creation, as what Paul talks about, that we're a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come, and all this from God. Life comes from Jesus. He's the source of life. And so, therefore, for, for those who were, he was speaking to, he wants them to understand that in the end, it's Moses who's going to condemn them because Moses spoke about Jesus, spoke about him being the one who would bring life. He's the one who, through whom God would bring about a, a new creation, who would bring about a new covenant. He's the one who would have to die in order for that to come about. And so we celebrate at communion that we come to the place of remembrance, remembering what Jesus did for us so that we could have life, so that we could have life in all its fullness. As, uh, as we see, Jesus says in John chapter 10, verse 10, He's the way, the truth, and the life. He's the only way. He is the truth, and He is the life. He's the water of life. He's the bread of life. All the things that we see in our windows that remind us about who Jesus is, but what He can give us. But we need to be not like those who were diligently studying the Scriptures, but we're a bit like a thief and a policeman. You see, a thief is not looking for a policeman, and they weren't looking for Christ, and that was the problem. They had all these set of rules and, and, and regulations that they had, they had added to God's Word, but they weren't looking for God. What does Jesus say? They were looking for praise from men, not praise from God. They were looking in the wrong places. And so that's why we can see that there are those who can read the Word of God, but yet they can't come to Him because they come not looking for Him. But we need to be those who recognize who Jesus is, who recognize that He is the one who is to come, who recognize that He's the one who can sort us out, who can bring life, who can bring joy and peace and all the different things that the world cannot give, as Jesus says in John chapter 14. Peace I give to you. My peace I leave with you. I do not give to you as the world gives. See, the world is looking for things that only God alone can give. And it's the Scriptures that don't bring life but lead us to the place, the one who can bring life. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth that is in it. That, Lord, that you lead us to you, the truth, the life. Father, would you help us Help us, Lord, that we would seek you with all our heart. Every day we'd come to know you more, 
And Lord, we wouldn't be satisfied with simply knowing you ourselves, but we would want to make you known to others. That, Lord, we would point people to who you are. And Lord, would you help us that every day that we would not just seek to, to know you more, but, Lord, we would seek to be more like you so that others would see you in us by your Holy Spirit. Lord, we know that there are many in our world who are looking for what the world cannot give, but only you alone can. Lord, help us that we would testify not just about what you have done for us, but what you are doing in us and what you will do when you come back again, that one day we will be with you forever that we will have eternal life with you. We ask this in your name. Amen. We sing worship, glory, praise, and honor to our God, high throned above. Maybe one. Grant that every member of your church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that your glory may be proclaimed through our lives. And we pray this morning for the persecuted church. We think of all those people throughout the world that you have created, Father, who are struggling, who face death, who face torture because of their faith in you. And we pray now, Lord, that you would speak to each one that you would bless each one, encourage them, and help them to keep their eyes on what it is you have called them to do. And we also pray for 
your creation. Lord, we know that we live in a sinful world and that your creation is broken. So Lord, forgive us for not being good stewards of that creation. And I pray, Lord, that through your Holy Spirit you would encourage us to be to look after your creation better. And we pray for those known to us in need of your touch. And in the silence, we bring them to your throne of grace. together. Stretch out your hand to bring healing to those who are sick, comfort for those who mourn, and hope to those in despair. And accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. And as we can't shake hands, we'll just turn to each other and acknowledge each other. So we worship God again by singing, You're the Word of God the Father.
Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and pray. And let us pray. Father, Lord of all creation, we praise you for your goodness and your love. When we turned away, you did not reject us. You came to meet us in your Son, welcomed us as your children, and prepared a table where we might feast with you. In Christ, you, share, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened wide his arms upon the cross, and with love stronger than death, he made the perfect sacrifice for sin. Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, on the night before you died, you came to the table with your friends. Taking bread, you gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the bread of life. Then at supper, you took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the true vine. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Holy Spirit, giver of life, come upon us now. May this bread and wine be to us a remembrance of the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us who know our need of grace, one in Christ, our risen Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity, with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you the sacrifice of thanks and praise. Lift our voice to join the song of heaven, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Thanks be to you, our God, for your gift beyond words. Amen. 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 Jesus Christ, as the Lamb of God, has taken away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. And the blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We stand. Almighty God, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
we finish our service by singing, We Have a Gospel to Proclaim. Please be seated uh, and wait for the wardens to direct you out. And uh, Lorna and Beatrice are going to play us out. Every blessing.